How many bananas can you eat at like one time? Because I feel like when I eat like more than one and a half bananas, my mouth gets a little itchy. Is that normal? How many bananas can you eat at one time? Like, like personally, one or just like in in personally. Oh, yeah. I can eat a bunch. I usually uh, right now we're out of bananas, but I mean, I usually eat three or four. And then um, there was a time where I would eat like maybe like seven. 12, like 8 to 12 in a day. Dang. Yeah, I like bananas. Bananas are so good. Such a good fruit. So easy. And, um, yeah, because uh, I'm, uh, I'm vegan. I don't want to get too much into that, but, like, basically I eat pretty much only plants. Plant-based eating. Yeah. Do you ever make uh, smoothies? I make a lot of those. Yeah, that's that's usually how I get down those bananas so easily. Yeah, if you if you're having an itchy mouth, you might have some allergies to it. You might want to look into that, get some blood work done, figure out why that's the case. It's too bad because I really like bananas, but like, I can't fill myself up on bananas. Like, I can't have a banana for a snack. Always hungry afterwards. Because your mouth just one isn't enough. Yeah, it's just, like, kind of irritating. After, like, maybe two bananas, I just don't want to eat anymore. Yeah, yeah. I would challenge that. Try, like, try to eat as many as you can. Um, like, obviously stop if something you get a really weird re- reaction. But, mm. um, hold on, let's see. When I start choking on my own tongue, it's time to stop. Banana allergy. Banana intolerance. So there's a very small percentage of people, but they might symptoms such as swelling of the lips and tongue, wheezing, cramps, and diarrhea typically occur immediately or very soon after eating the fruit. The skin itching, rashes can also develop. Pitching the fruit or peel. It's thought that the banana allergy is not solely brought by on by the fruit itself, but by protein. Chinese, the protein is present in kiwis and avocado. Do you have the same problem with that, avocados and kiwi? No, no problem at all. Uncommon for sufferers of banana allergies to also react badly to those two fruits. No, it's, it's suspected. It's not necessarily. I'm not sure if this is like a trusted website either, but it's the first link. Mm. Um, itching mouth and throat. So I'll try to eat two, see what happens. Like, I wouldn't say, like, and do, do it slowly, too. Don't, like, eat, like, two and five minutes or something like that. Like, take your time and then just see how you react. All right. Uh, because, yeah, it is a shame. Bananas are such a super fruit. They have a lot of the essential um, nutrients we need. Like, bananas alone, like, they have so much great stuff in them. And they're so easy to transport, too. Come in their own wrapper. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, bananas are great. They're easy. They're really good for you. They taste delicious. Right? They're like, um, like, they're, because our our ancestors are, are from the primates, right? And so a lot of primates eat fruits, uh, especially bananas. Um, so that's why we kind of have a natural inkling for them. So like when you're eating, uh, fruits in general are just not very difficult to, to deal with. You know, you don't hear too many people complaining about eating fruits. You know what I mean? Like everybody will say what they really, oh, I'm gluten free or I'm paleo or whatever, but no diet says you shouldn't eat fruits. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like fruits are just yeah. so safe. They're so good. Um, Nature's candy. Yeah, yeah. It's because we just naturally love it. Our brains um, feed off of glucose, and fruits definitely. You don't love fruits? That's a lie. There's, there's absolutely like you may not like bananas. You may not like 
watermelons. You may not like, like there might be a certain fruit that you might not like or a certain group of fruits. But to say that you don't like fruits at all is a lie. There's definitely something. There, there's, I like there, the texture. Yeah, there, there is definitely a fruit that you can eat and love. You don't uh, eat yeah, fruit. but bananas aren't bad. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't know anybody that's like, I hate, I hate all fruits. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know people that are weird, like, they just don't like certain fruits. Like, oh, I don't like uh, kiwis because they're kind of fuzzy. I get that. That makes sense. You know, or I don't like this fruit because it's too sour or this fruit because it's too sweet. But they'll be like, right, but I love figs, or I love this, or I love that, or whatever. Plantains versus bananas, or um, pears versus apples, you know, oranges versus, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, I love fruits. I like pretty much all fruits. Uh, mangoes are probably my favorite. And I'm getting really good at cut, cutting them, so I can eat them quickly. There's something about them. They're like they're savory, but they're also very sweet. So I love them. I did a diet once where you weren't allowed to have any sugar, or like less than two grams of sugar. And what? Yeah, and then I think for the first half of the week you would eat under like twenty carbs. What? And what? That, but then on two days of the week you would just have to pig out like crazy just slamming bagels and all this stuff that sounds it was a terrible. miserable miserable diet yeah that's so terrible yeah um like i said i don't want to get too into this but uh i would i would recommend reading or looking at uh some books that talk about all this stuff one in particular, the China, the China, uh, the China study, and then following after that would be um, would be uh, how not to die. Two doctors who's uh, these are three different three doctors who specialize in nutrition and diet. Uh, they're they're nutritional doctors. They're not nutritionists. If that makes sense. They're not people that, um, not to knock on the nutritionists at all either, but it's just these people's whole careers were built around the science behind nutrition. Uh, and that's very important to understand, like the science, right? And you'll be shocked. Like I said, I, I, I'm vegan, but I it's just the, that's just the name to call the person who doesn't eat any animal products at all. You know what I mean? But if I really had to put a name on it, because I don't like the po political association with it, really, right? I um, I'm basically I'm just a I'm just a herbivore. That's pretty much what it is, <laughs> right? I'm just straight up herbivore. You know, like every so often, maybe omnivore-ish, but in a very very passive way. Like if someone like uh, in a different country may offer me something, I'll eat it. Because I used to be really stickler about that, but I'm like, ah, what the hell am I doing? Like. People are really nice to me, and they're like trying to have me eat. They're, they're not like, oh, we know, we know that you don't like to eat this, so we're gonna put it in your face. Like they don't know, you know, they don't know the. So I'm just being pretentious if I act that way, right? And yeah. it's, it's not gonna like kill it... me either, right? It's not like, ah, 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 you know, it's fine. Like it's like I've been, I was eating it for like 30 years of my life, right? It's not like all of a sudden uh, I'm gonna die from it, right? And so. Uh, Do you feel like it? Or does it make a difference to you when you're exercising, like versus when you're eating more meats? Yeah, you actually have more energy if you eat more plant because uh, you know. eat carbs. Because, um, uh, cause think of it like this: like I have friends who do CrossFit and stuff, and they mm -hmm. eat a lot of you know meat, right? But they drink a lot of coffee. Like they like they seem like they have no energy because they drink so much coffee, right? Uh, and it's because. Uh, Fat is not a good substitute, or protein and fat are not a good substitute for carbs in terms of energy. In fact, uh, if you look at <laughs> professional athletes, they, they do something called carbo, uh, carb loading. Have you heard of this? Yeah. Where well, they'll eat tons and tons of carbs before like a competition to just stack up on that energy. Because that's what runs our blood. That's what runs our blood, our, our brain, is glucose, right? Sugar. All of our, all of what makes us run is based off of, like sugar, yeah. And um, that's what plants do. Plants make sugar, right? 
So we're getting it some way. I mean, if we really want to get meta, let's get super meta. Okay. Um, if you really want to get meta, like where does our energy really come from? It comes from the sun. Okay. Like all of our energy, like pretty much comes from the sun. You understand this? And so the plants soak up the energy and then we eat the plants or we eat the animals that eat the plants. You get it? Like the, the plants turn that sunlight into uh, sugars that we can then process and have energy. And it's the fuel that helps us pump and do all the crazy cool stuff that we can do. That's why people who are on super high fat diets, uh, they'll lose a lot of weight, but then they eventually feel super lethargic because um, they're not getting the ultimate, the, the most efficient source of energy. Does it make sense? And so uh, that's why a lot yeah. of people drink coffee. That's why coffee is a thing. I don't drink coffee at all. I don't need to. Um, I feel fine. And it's just, uh, now that these headaches are gone, like, dude, I'm like a whole different person. I don't, I, I, I think I have too much energy. I don't go to sleep at night very easily. <laughs> right? Like, like I wake up today at 7.30, like freaking right, ready to go. And then um, I still feel really good right now. <laughs> And all I had was oatmeal and some fruits. Right. And I went to bed at 11. Uh, I put piano music. I think a lot of what makes me, it makes it hard for me to sleep is, has nothing to do with my diet. It's actually it's because I'm constantly, my brain is on. You know what I mean? It's like 100%, like always thinking about something. Sure. So there's there, there's a different problem that I need. Uh, so I need to do some yoga or some sort of meditation before bed. Right. Um, I heard book reading, like real book reading, like something actually that doesn't have a light in your face. So I'll start reading books uh, and boring books. So I might read Game of Thrones <laughs> or Lord, Lord of the Rings. Something that's really heavy and just going to put me to sleep, <laughs> you know, because it basically just helps your mind organize for a second. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just how it is, man. Like, um, Think about like lions, like lions lay down like all the time, right? They don't really do shit and when, until they're ready to eat. And they have a very short lifespan in the wild too. They only live up to 14 to 15 years in the wild, right? And then uh, if you look at like uh, herbivores, like elephants or our closest primates like gorillas, like silverback or chimpanzees, they live up to 30 to 40 years in the wild. It's, it's just more efficient. It's just better. It starts making sense when you start thinking about it. Like you start thinking about the foods that you really love, like foods that you just can't eat with, like live without, like starches, like potato, uh, rice, beans, uh, corn, you know, these types of foods. The kinds of foods that were easy to grow and to like have agriculture around, right? Because mm -hmm. our ancestors absolutely did eat meat for sure. There's no doubt about that, right? But they didn't eat it at the capacity that we eat today. Right, like killing a cow or an ox or whatever was like a big deal. It wasn't like, all right, we got it. Let's put it in our refrigerator and we'll see if it on Thursday, you know. And so, yeah. I usually, whenever I talk to people about this, so anyone who's ever interested in fixing or adjusting their diet, I usually suggest moderation. Like, just don't eat as much as you, you normally would, and add more. Uh, and it's funny because everyone already knows this. Like, you should just eat more fruits and vegetables. That's it. And you'll, you'll see a difference. Like, you know, I don't want you guys to abandon any kind of habits or thing. I want you to do it if you want to naturally. Like, that's what happened for me. I didn't originally was planning to do that. It's just as I was feeling better, I just, it just made some more sense to just kind of go, keep going with it until the point where um, then uh, the ethical aspect of it started to hit me a little bit more easier, if that makes sense. Because I wasn't so, I wasn't as biased anymore. And then uh, yeah. I'm a big, I'm yeah. a big, uh, I'm a big believer of of fighting against causes that, or fighting with causes, or or against mm -hmm. things that you don't agree with. And one of the biggest things I hate is the stubbornness we have about climate change. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest contributors to climate change is animal agriculture. And that that when I found that out, I was like, all right, well, there's no going back now. You know, For sure. I was like, now that I'm here, I'm like, fucking why, why even go back? You know, because I really like I have kids, you know, and I don't want them to not pay for the stuff that we're like our, our negligence and our freaking uh, selfishness. 
And if I can contribute in any way, then I'm going to. So I started donating to like environmentalist websites too, because that's like, even if I'm not actively going out there and doing something about it, like I'm giving other people money to be able to do it. And then also um, teaching my kids to stay away from that as well, grow in a different kind of mentality. Because like I still have dreams of like eating hot wings every so often because hot wings are delicious man like uh uh what you call it like kfc hot wings man i used to eat those like freaking the 20 box i eat the whole thing man i love them so i still have dreams of that or like some of those my mom's cooking she's here and she's like she's cooking a lot of the stuff that i love and i just haven't ate and ate it uh but interesting enough my mom made a lot of just delicious just vegetables too you know, I was like, whoa, all right, this is working out all right, you know? Um, but I still have, like, that nostalgia, and it's really deep, you know? Uh, so I'm trying to prevent my kids from having that nostalgia, if that makes sense. So if they choose to do it later in life, that's fine. I'm not going to stop them. But, like, but they won't be kind of, like, they'll be in a better position, you know what I mean, than I am. Because it was really hard, especially giving up dairy. Dairy is fucking so hard to give up guys mm-hmm. and, and it's everywhere it's like in things you didn't think of it you're like what is it in that i didn't know it was in that you're like holy crap right it's just like everything is just doused in dairy it's, it's yeah. kind of disgusting but uh but anyway i digress yeah I, I highly i highly recommend you guys to look into your health because you know uh especially our generation we're, we have the worst and then our kids are going to even have it even worse than us. So, like, my mom, for instance, she's super healthy. She eats lots of, uh, like, her generation's the first generation to start to see the, the terrible side effects of the the increase of animal agriculture. Her generation was the first generation to see the problems of it. But they don't see it until their 50s or their 60s, right? Uh, my mom, she's in her 60s, but she's, like, super healthy, and she smokes. She smoked every day for 30 years, right? And because she, she eats mostly plants because she's uh, she was a farm girl, you know? My dad, on the mm-hmm. other hand, is not, and he's having high blood pressure. He's overweight. He has all these disabilitating things, you know? And it's like I look at both of my sides of my family, and I can see the example of what, what path I could live. If I eat more like my mom, I'll be really healthy. If I eat more like my dad... I had to look forward to having high blood pressure and potentially uh, just high risk go of to like the go to like the junk food aisle of Walmart and then go to like the Whole Foods store and just compare the people that are there and that gives you all the motivation you need. <laughs> yeah, right. So so but you know it's it makes more sense if you just look at even your own family, right? Because these are the people that you can see, and so then I started to do that, and then. Um, but then, like our generation, our generations of people who we're starting to experience terrible things in our uh, mid thirties, or in early forties. Okay, so you might not, you might feel fine today, but when you start getting closer to your thirties and forties, you'll start feeling it. You'll start seeing these side effects, these problems. Okay, <clears throat> like I did. Like I had a pituitary tumor. I just got it removed, right? And that I, we we believe. My wife and I believe it's because because that was the same time that I was eating more meat and dairy than ever because I was working out like crazy, mm-hmm. right? I needed to get my protein, right? Yeah, that's and... the same process. Is I, I eat pretty strict, but I do have like like I'll put uh, chicken in my rice, mm-hmm. and that's maybe maybe a can of tuna as well, and that's pretty much all the meat I eat. Um, but yeah, I have been curious about what the effects would be on like weightlifting and stuff if I just cut those out and went all yeah you can still get vegan. you can still get protein in plants there's a you can look in uh, vegan bodybuilders you'll see a great example <laughs> it's absolutely possible it's not it's not like that's the only source and there's a misconception that protein is only found in meat uh, the same amount of calorie intake of cal- uh, of kale like 300 calories of kale has uh, 1.5 more times protein than chicken in 300 calories of chicken and kale is way better for you because it has micronutrients as well right okay. and it has fiber it has all the stuff that your body can use really you know and so but 300 calories of kale by the way is an enormous proportion okay <laughs> we're three like like if we were to draw it like this is like chicken 300 calories of chicken to like 300 calories of kale 
right? It's like a lot. Dang. It's like you're 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 gonna feel like a cow. You're gonna like, chew it forever. So that's, that's why you should like steam it or like uh, you know cook it in some capacity so it shrinks down. It's easier, more manageable to eat, right? Otherwise, because um, like you know cows and any most omnivores, they spend all their days eating. You know, that's like all they do is eat all day. And um, so we have that. That's the advantage that humans had. We were we invented cooking. When that technology was invented, that changed our ability to to hunt and stuff because we didn't need to need to do it as much, right? Because we can cook, so we could take something like a potato, something that's really hard to eat, right? If you just take it out of the ground and then cook it, and then all of a sudden it becomes really easy to eat, and you can eat a lot of it, right? And then that's um, what a lot of these um, scientists were saying is what was made, one of the main contributors to. Um, or brain growth was mar- modern agriculture, or not modern, um, like early stages of agriculture, like when we were able to actually farm and store foods that uh, don't go bad in like a day or two, like that we can actually store it away and then eat it, and it allowed our brains to really grow, which is cool. But anyway, yeah, like I said, going back to kind of the point I was trying to make, um, yeah, I, I, I just been, I just, just slowly but surely just. You know, I'm convinced, you know, and then my wife, like we were, I was just telling you that my wife just had an incident, you know, because she was just eating all my mom's cooking. And my mom, I, like I said, ironically, doesn't even eat the food that she cooks. She like eats like like maybe not even a handful of food of the, the meat. She eats mostly vegetables, right? But my wife was like eating like tons of it, you know, because it's delicious. And she's like, well, it's fine. You know, your mom's here. I, wanna, I don't want to be rude. I was like, yeah, but you shouldn't eat so much. And then she had an incident and she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I was like, because she was eating clean with me. And I think that huge paradigm shift, like going back to it, like screwed her up really badly. Mm. Right. And now I think she's really convinced because she, we got really scared about it. It was pretty bad, you know? So she's like, oh my gosh. Uh, my sons, um, like I said, my sons, uh, my teenage sons, they're getting the worst of it too. They're like already overweight. And they come from a family of people that are that have high metabolism, right? And they're already overweight. Like I, I didn't get to come overweight until I was in my late thirties or my my late twenties, and that's because of I was drinking a lot of alcohol, right? And so, it's just like my babies, my like three year old and uh, five year old, they're fucking screwed if I don't like do something about it. You know what I mean? They're gonna be overweight when they're in their early teens. Right, uh, but not anymore. Uh, and you know what happened too? When I switched them over, uh, my daughter's constipation went away. She, her constipation went away. She had she had a lot of constipation. Uh, she would have skin rashes. She would scratch them and bleed, like scratch them until they bleed. It was bad. Uh, all that stuff went away. You know, uh, they're really balanced in terms of their hormones. They're not like crazy. You know, they're not at one moment like freaking crazy children. They're usually pretty well. And they're really good kids. Uh, they have a lot of energy. They sleep throughout the night. It's no big deal, you know. And they love like my daughter made me really proud because uh, my mom made her chicken, right? And she was eating it. And then my teenage son's like, "Oh, you know that's real chicken, right? It's not fake chicken." And she's like, "What? I don't want to eat real chickens." And she's like, "Ugh, <laughs> yeah." Because I, I started teaching her the, the the ethical aspect of it, too. And so she's just like, yeah, I don't really, you know. And my teenage son, he's starting to come around, too. He's like, yeah. He's like, I think you're right. Because he was, he was talking to me about it. I was like, so look, like, there's some people in the world that they need to eat meat, right? They really are. Because, like, either they're in rural areas in the world where, you know, food scarcity is really bad. And having a little bit of, like, a chicken here and there, you know, is going to keep them from being malnutrition, right? Like that's that's a real problem, you know. It's like, but dude, we live in Irvine, California. <laughs> you know, we're like 20 minutes from the beach. We live like we have Whole Foods, like you were just saying. You know, we 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 don't have these problems. We don't have the problem of being malnutrition. You know, we have the option to to choose the kinds of foods we want to eat. Right? We have that. We we have that privilege. So so you don't you don't have to exploit it. Is what I'm trying to say. 
And uh, he, he he agreed with that. He was like, yeah, I don't think we want to do that. And so I started breaking it down because uh, his blood pressure went up because he went to live with his dad because I'm his stepdad. And he went to live with his dad for the summer and he came back 10 pounds heavier and with high blood pressure just in three months. And I was like, what the hell happened? <laughs> and he was just eating nothing but fish tacos. And I was like, dude. Have you learned nothing? Mm-mm. Like, I don't want to be strict to the point where like, they can't eat whatever they want. I just said, like, moderation. Like, every if you have lunch, breakfast, lunch, dinner is just constant, you know, bombardment of cholesterol and saturated fat. Your blood pressure is just going to go up. It just is. And it's worse now. Like I said, our generation uh, has it the worst. And I think it's our kids' generation – to decide whether we really make a turn in our societal diet, right? Or we're all just going to fucking die from diseases and just be overweight. And then uh, other countries will be better about it. And we'll just be known as a fat, dying, sick country. And we're just, we can't do nothing about it until enough of us die from it, right? Because have you noticed that there's more fitness programs than ever and there's billions of dollars put into the health industry, the health and fitness industry, and even to medication and um, uh, like the, the the cure of obesity, basically, right? And this health problems that we had, billions of dollars have been invested in this, and it's getting worse every year. How is that possible? Right? Shouldn't it be getting better? And it's because um, hospitals don't make any money if you're healthy. Healthy people don't need to go see doctors. Healthy people don't need to take medication. Healthy people don't need to go to the gym. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can live a super healthy life without ever lifting a weight. You can just walk 20, 30 minutes every day and be really healthy and have really good cardiovascular, you know? But yet, all this stuff is a phenomenon here in the States. It's a big deal, right? And yet, people are still fat. Planet Fitness, what a joke. Like, they serve pizza every Friday. <laughs> fuck you doing <laughs> you know it's like yeah it, it's like i said i don't want to get too much into the rant of this but if you just start thinking right if you just start cognitively thinking about the interest of the businesses versus your own personal interest they don't care right they really don't we're not talking about bananas anymore are we <laughs> yeah you started this randall <laughs> all right so you you, you should well, let me let me ask you an art related question then yeah, go for Instead. it. Thank you, buddy. Um, it, it seems like a lot of the time I'm drawing, like, the same thing in my sketchbooks when I'm just kind of, like, drawing for fun and not, like, to practice. And I end up drawing, like, the same kind of things over and over, like, oh, robots, yeah. aliens, spacemen. Is there, like, a way you, like, get away from something you just, like, have on your mind constantly? I mean, I don't really want you to feel like you should stray away from that either. If that's something that you really love, you should keep keep at it, you know? But if you want to stray away, then you just got to – it's as simple as what you just said. You just stray away. You just try to draw something different. Um, one thing that you can try to do is practice different things, like put a different task at hand to try to get better at. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. don't uh, – like if you if you feel like you want to get better at lighting or you want to get better at vehicles or you want to get better at fantasy character, I, I don't know, whatever you, you're into – but you want to get better at it, like something that you like, but you, you know you're not that great at it, then try to draw yeah. it. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Because if, if you don't do that, um, uh, yeah, you'll just keep drawing the same things. But, but like I said, you'll get better at those same things too. So it's like it's not such a bad bad deal is what I'm getting at, you know? But okay. it, uh, I, I always am constantly trying to get better at something different for that for that purpose, but just mostly because whenever I am like on Facebook or I'm on like Instagram or some sort of website that is like, you know, for me, my Facebook is mostly other art stuff, but if sometimes it isn't like, especially lately, it's been a lot of politics. It's just politics. have been just really since Trump. Right. And mm-hmm. so, um, I just go to art station or Pinterest. Now I, I have my places. There's places you can go, right. You can just find great artwork. And just be like, oh, man, I never thought about doing that. You know, and then you just try to do it. Okay. Right? Because I'm really yeah. I'm really into all that kind of stuff, you know? 
And so, like, I really don't, um, I don't slow down is what I'm trying to get at. Like, I'm always trying to, to improve my skills. It's something. And sometimes it's not as, uh, it's not, like, so obvious, right? It's not like, I'm like, all right, now I'm going to learn this thing because I should. It's just, like, it's just organic. Like, I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm going to learn some 3D today because I want to get better at 3D. Because I saw this really cool 3D painting or 3D sculpt, and I want to just do one right now. Right? And I just do that, and I just feel it, and I, I just, like, I feel sketchbooks, too, should be places where they can be bad. Like, they can, like you're allowed to make mistakes in your sketchbook, too. Whenever I see someone's sketchbook and it's really good, like, every drawing in their sketchbook is amazing, um, I feel like they're just making portfolio pieces. You know, that's not, to me, sketches anymore. Those are, like, full-on drawings. You know, those are things that can get them jobs, right? And mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm just trying to make, give you a comparison to what my sketchbook is because my sketchbooks are not portfolio pieces. They are trash. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because that's that's where I feel safe. That's where I feel like it's time to, to really fucking up, you know? That's why I made yeah. the daily 3D and 2D. It's, it's to, to help you find a place to fuck up, you know? And have people see it. Because what, what, what happens when you show it to people, too, is there's some sort of accountability to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have even a sketchbook and 3D stuff that I don't show anybody at all because it's just so bad. Um, but it's okay, like I said, because you're allowed to make mistakes and you're allowed to be bad. And that's kind of the point. It's like I don't mind being really bad. Okay. So yeah, it's a good question. So it's kind of like a matter of kind of like, not not necessarily like going out and looking for things to copy, but just like if you're inspired, just kind of following it. Yeah, just follow yeah. whatever your gut is, and then try to get. And I guess another good point would be is don't. Whoa! What the? Someone shuffling deck of cards. Um, don't just stay stagnant on like one thing. Uh, or I'm sorry, don't don't just do it for like a little bit. Like really try for like at least a, a few days or even a week. You know, try to improve yeah. in whatever that is. You know, before you you throw in the towel. Um, mm -hmm. because that, you, then you're really giving it a real tempt and you're really trying to improve. And then if you don't improve or whatever, whatever the case may be, if you don't improve, um, then it's it's fine. You just come back to it some other time. But usually you will. I don't. I can never think of a time where I didn't improve, at, even just a little bit. You know, it, it it might be just even a little improvement, but that's enough. That was one of the things like Mr. Aoshima was talking about. It was just like being like versatile, and if you're gonna like apply to a job, like make a whole portfolio focused right on like what that show is about. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, I think that's a good advice. I generally, like I said, you, you know, kind of the feedback that I've given you specifically, but I'm generally in the favor of you doing what you like over anything else. And when you hear feedback like that, I agree with it. And in in the scope that it should be jobs that you actually want. Like if you really love Adventure Time, right? Like, maybe you're not drawing stuff right now that fits in Adventure Time, but, like, you maybe you really do love it. Then why don't you build some Adventure Time concepts, you know? Um, because it's or, it's organic. You love it already, and you're just building towards that. And the, the thing is, is that it doesn't mean that you'll even get a job there. It just means that your style will start to, to reminate some sort of quality and professionalism. And then some other studio will be like, we like Adventure Time too, and we want to make an Adventure Time type show, and we're going to hire you. You get it? That, yeah. that happens more, that's more likely to happen than to actually get the job at the studio. Because for forever, I was always trying to get onto the Blizzard Cinematics team. At first, I was just trying to work at Blizzard in general, because I love Blizzard, so I had like all kinds of stylized stuff as well. But but then I realized, it's just like, in my bones, I just, I'm a technical guy. Like I like to just be good. You know what I mean? Like, I want to make my paintings look and feel good at a technical level, you know? When I was learning yeah. guitar, I was trying to, like, 
like I was playing in a pop punk band, you know, like Blink One Eight Two type stuff. But I was like listening to death metal, Ingwai Momsteam, Steve Vai, because I was like trying to also like be a great guitarist. You know what I'm saying? Like the most respected member of Blink One Eight Two for me was Travis Barker, and he was the drummer. I wasn't a drummer; I was a guitarist, right? But because he was so technically sound, you know, he was like so good. Um, like he he was a pop band drummer, but he was like an amazing drummer. You can't say the same about Travis or uh, Tom and uh, Mark, right? Hmm. They're they're not. I don't think they're masters of their instruments at all. In fact, I saw them live and it was pretty awful. Um, but what makes their live shows great was that they're funny. But they. It seems like they don't know how to play their instruments except for Travis. <laughs> but my point, I digress. My point is, is I, like that's like where I was, and then so then when I uh, applied for Blizzard, you know, I could never get onto the WoW team, which was specifically the team that had the more stylized stuff. But like you know, my my friend was always like, you could probably get on the Diablo team though, and also on um, the Cinematics team. And I was like, that makes sense because Cinematics is like there's a little bit of style there, but it's also very um, realistic, you know. And so I'd always try, and I never got in. And then when I just stopped trying, I was just like, whatever, I guess I'll just never work there, right? And I stopped trying. Um, that's when they gave me a call, right? But at that point, my po- my portfolio was living up to that standard, right? Because I was always kind of aiming for that anyway. And it just happened that it just worked out, you know? And so that's why I always encourage people to just, yeah, of course, have an aim, but don't uh, don't assume that you'll get that job right away, or if at all. But you'll definitely start to get some sort of work, having to some sort of quality to your work. So yeah, that's great advice because it, it's uh, uh, what it really does. To kind of just put that all, all of what I'm trying to say into a nutshell, what it really does is just gives you a very clear and objective goal. Okay. Right. It's not subjective anymore. It's like, oh, does this look like it can go into Sesame Street? This monster I just drew? No. Why not? Oh, because Sesame Street doesn't have fucking monsters and Muppets and stuff, right? <laughs> it's it's very clear. You're not gonna see this guy as a guest on that show, <laughs> like Cthulhu freaking henchman guy here. You know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, having some sort of standards is pretty good. Um, but not like not letting those standards guide your portfolio 100%. Like, like letting it just be a, a guide, but not like a like I don't want you to have just nothing but things that look like it could only exist for that one show, but it should look like it can exist for that one show, right? Hmm. Hey, man. Hey, what's up? I have a small question I, right. I remember yeah. that in one of your stream you spoke about like uh, how you were working uh, too much on your artwork oh yeah and totally I would like you to go a little bit further on that because I feel like I'm in this spot right now where I put like too much work on my stuff and like um, I guess what I want to say is uh, how much is too much uh, okay so that's a hard that is kind of a hard question to answer too right It's like how much is too much? I feel like too much for me is like it, 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 that's something that I'm. It's gonna probably you, you know you should ask me this question a year from now. Okay, like get a calendar, put it like a year from now. Ask AJ because but, but he'll be more profound then. Okay, um, yeah. because I myself have just discovered this has been a problem about a year or so ago. Okay, okay. and I've only like within the last several months, especially once I had my tumor and all the procedure and all that shit I went through and seeing that I was missing out on my kids, like a lot of stuff kind of collected up, right? Mm-hmm. Like for instance, I've been playing with my kids a lot more now, like in the last few days than I have in the last year or two. Um, yeah. Cause I just was sick and I was, or I was working too much. Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and now I'm not as sick and I'm not working as much. So like, Uh, before the class started, the class started a little later because I was playing a memory game with my son. And then I took a longer break because I was uh, teaching my daughter some math uh, in a fun way. And they were, they enjoy it. They like, like, like doing it with me. It's like family time, you know, and, and I'm trying to make it fun too. Like a lot of these 
games that they out there right now are kind of bullshit. And so I'm just trying. I'm I'm even thinking of making my own game for them, just so that they can. It's easier for them. Uh, I'm yeah, thinking of right. other stuff like I'm like letting them play Overwatch and World of Warcraft with me. I uh, I uh, started to uh, put together some sort of like kids version of like a LARPing situation where they were pretending to be pirates, and we're gonna put like some real stats and numbers and some. I got like these really big foam dice and swords and stuff, so we can like actually solidify some actual real battle in life <laughs> you know? awesome. so it's not just like us pretending like i want them to it's going to be like 70 percent pretending 30 percent. there's some actual stats but they're kids you know i don't want to be like rolling dice all day i want them to actually try to fight each other in a fun playful way but there's ob- just ob- there's objectivity to it there's like a treasure i want to put real toys in the treasure you know so they can actually there's like real fun and I wouldn't have been able to do that before because, you know, I was so hardworking and also so um, uh, tired and sick, right? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of these reasons. Uh, and so, like I said, I, uh, I've i just discovered this in the last six or seven months. And like, like I teach you guys, everything takes practice, even this understanding of what I believe hard work is, you know? Yeah. Um, I've been watching a lot of more TED videos and I'm just kind of like collecting information. I'm taking a look at other professional people that I know personally, and I'm looking at people that are notable, notably successful and then paying attention to their happiness, you know, and I'm starting to believe this idea of hard work. I'm thinking physio- physio- like physiologically, like is hard work a thing that we should admire? Like as like as as actual fucking sacks of water and meat. Like, are we built to hard to do hard work? You know. Yeah. Um, because everything in our psychology and our physiology kind of fights against it, doesn't it? Like procrastination is easier, right? Yeah. Why? Why is it easier? And so that the question I start to ask myself is like, so is procrastination actually bad? You know what I'm saying? Like being lazy, bad. And I don't mean being only lazy. I definitely think if you are nothing but lazy, that's bad, right? (laughs) But if you are nothing but hard work, I think that's equally as bad is what I'm trying to get at. Even if you look at a lazy person and that lazy person maybe doesn't have a great career and doesn't have a lot of money, whatever, uh, but they're really lazy and nothing comes from their life, you know, and they complain about it, whatever. That same thing can happen to someone that has everything in the world. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's like a good middle ground where it's okay to, to have a little bit of like playtime. And I don't even say a little bit. I'm thinking maybe half of your time could be playtime or things you like to do. And the other half is get to work. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's a balance. Like I like that I can draw and paint and do all this stuff, but I'd rather also to be doing that with my kids. Or I'd rather be hanging out with my kids and watching them grow and get smarter and become their best friends as well as their parent, right? Yeah. Because um, I don't, like in the grand scope of things, I don't give a fuck about how good I am at painting if my kids don't know who I am. <laughs> yeah, this, this is more important. Yeah. And I know, and it's not even like, a, it just is to me. And some people it's not. Some people have kids and they can care less about that they, they love them and they will do everything they can to make them you know happy but but they can probably they probably don't stand hanging out with their kids you know and i don't i don't think there's a problem with that entirely really i don't i don't want to judge anyone for who they are and how they are and they might not admit it either like i see this and i, I can see that they don't want to be with their kids i but at the same time you know that's not me that's not the kind of person that i want to be right And so getting back to the kind of this hard work stuff, like I said, like I'm starting to kind of scratch the surface of that. And so one of the things that I would say though, one of the things that I could say is that uh, I'm starting to think that a lot of what we were taught in school is just, I'm questioning a lot of it, including this idea of working really, really hard. Okay. Um, So, you know, you've heard the saying work smart, not smart, work smarter, not harder. I'm sure you've heard of that. So I believe there's a lot of truth to that, but but first you have to be smart. So you have to first get to the smart, then you can start, you know? So then, so the, the, because it's still too, and I'm starting to get away from too abstract 
of advice like that. Like practice makes perfect. That's too abstract. Like what kind of practice? And I've given you many examples of what kind of practice that is, right? Yeah. Which is to basically pay attention. Just be awake what you're le learning, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and a lot of it too has to do with timing yourself. Timing yourself or some sort of, basically adding some sort of level of challenge and quantifiable result. I think that's where yeah, it's really coming to it. Like, I think it's the best thing I've learned from this mentorship is the whole timing thing. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's just one tool. There's many others, and you yeah. can discover your own. You can, you can learn from other people's examples. But, but what I really learned um, is to, to create a challenge that is quantifiable, that has a quantifiable result. Yeah. Like two, two plus two equals what? That's a challenge, doing the math. Do you know how to do it? Oh, you do? It's five. No, it's not. Oh, why not? Because one, two, three, four, five. That's not four. It's four. Oh, can you explain it to me other ways? Yeah, let's use our fingers. That's what I've been doing with my daughter. One, two, three, four. You know? Yeah. It's a challenge, but there's a way we can cor check our answers. You understand? <laughs> and a lot of teaching and a lot of, um, especially in the art community, a lot of teaching and education is around non-quantifiable uh, feedback. Right? Oh, you know what? Your design is just too weird. You just need to make it less weird. That's not what? That's not quantifiable feedback. You know, there's how can we ever improve from that piece of advice? Uh, one of my students had that problem. He was talking about like uh, he had like posted stuff, and people were saying that his design was too complicated. And I asked him to elaborate what they meant by that, and he couldn't. And I was like, mm -hmm. so that's your fault. You should have you should have asked more question. You should have had them elaborate to why it's complicated. Because yeah. you can have a complicated design that's really good. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can have a simple design that's really good. And you can have a complicated design that's really bad. And you can have a simple design that's really bad. That's not a way to – that's not how you help somebody out. It's just telling them some abstract idea, right? You have to have some sort of quantifiable result that we can adjust. When Scott Robertson told me that my materials were bad because they all look like plastic, I could see it for my myself, what he meant. I saw it like almost immediately, right? As soon as he said it, as soon as the words flew out of his mouth, I agreed 100%. And I went yeah. home and I just practiced and studied my materials until all my materials didn't look like plastic. Yeah, I get it. You know? And so, so getting back to the, the original question, though, I kind of went off a tangent on just like overall how to learn. Um, like that's where I'm at still. I'm still trying to learn what that means. But if I had to give you an answer today that I think is close to the, like my hypothesis, right? It's a hypothesis because it's not been tested yet entirely. Uh, my hypothesis is that I really believe that you need both play and both work. And if you are only doing work and if you're only doing play, you're messing it up. Yeah, it's all a question of balance. Balance, yeah. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. So, like, if you're not playing video games or you're not doing something that you enjoy, like a hobby that you like, and it could be drawing. Drawing could be that hobby. Like, maybe you just draw something that you like to draw, right? But you're yeah. not doing it to get better. You're not doing it to impress me or your, your fellow classmates. You're just doing it because you like to just do it, right? Yeah. You just like to just – whatever that could be. And it could still be art. That's what I'm saying. It could still be artistic, you know? which is great because then it kind of like doubles down, you know? Yeah. But you should be enjoying that time. You shouldn't feel like a struggle. It shouldn't feel like a challenge. You know, you sh it's kind of like what uh, Randall was saying. Like sometimes he's like, they're all robots and shit. Like yeah. I told, and I told him he should keep doing that, you know, because that's <laughs> yeah, what he likes good. to do and he's just going to get better at it. But that's I also told I him, do. yeah, I also told him, but draw things that you don't have such an easy time. You know, you got to do both, right? Yeah. So uh, how much is too much? I don't have a number for that yet. But I would say I would say too much, if I were to really say too much, is if that's all you're doing. I would say, I yeah, I, I think that's too much. I guess my question was more like, um, is there a moment like when you work, let's say, on a piece and you realize that you have worked 
Like, um, oh, okay. You put too much work on it, and then it starts to be messy because you're tired and stuff, and you just. Yeah, I think well, again, quantifiable result. So if you're just if you don't have a deadline, then you have to start making fake deadlines. Okay. Okay. So you got to be like, okay, in uh, like Friday of this week, or thirty hours, I'm going to invest in this thing, no matter what. Okay. So you mm -hmm. you even if you feel like it was done twenty hours, you still have to put those ten more hours because you said you're going to do it. And then, so then you can start saying, okay, at, at around the 10 hour mark or like after, okay, I spent 20 hours, I was feeling good about it. And then I spent five hours on it. I hate it. I feel like I re wrecked everything the way you said you just did. Right. So I have the next five hours to see if I could fix it. And then you start asking yourself because you, because at the 20 hour mark, you felt good about it, but you knew that it wasn't done. And so then the five hours later is worse. And then the 10, like maybe the next five hours even got worse or maybe it got better. But you, you could quantifiably say, okay, in like the, la the home stretch of what I'm doing, I'm really fucking it up. And then you can say, well, why? And you can stop. But then you can stop. You're allowed to stop at that 30-hour mark. You stop, and then you, you reassess, and you try to solve the problem the next time you do it. And you do 30 hours again, so that way you can compare. Do you understand? You yeah. don't add more time. You don't take away more time. I, I prefer taking away time, if anything. But you definitely don't add more time. Okay, because that would be cheating. Because how, like, you gotta, you have to make a closed experiment. You have to see quantifiable results. You have to see the difference. Yeah. So that way you can check your answers and you can be like, okay, I see what I did wrong the first time. You know? Yeah. And, it, and like, you know, point of breaking stuff. Yeah. yeah exactly. And and it's it's and here's the thing: you're allowed to to screw up. That's the, the another problem that I think a lot of people have. Is that there's a lot of attention attached to failure, um, and like I said, hopefully by the end of this class you realize you, it's inevitable. Get ready, yeah. right? It's a part of the process. Yeah, and get get really comfortable with failing. And once you start, because you're, if you get to the point where I'm at, like I'm really comfortable with it, you know, I'm really good yeah. about sucking, and so um, uh, I don't really care. I really don't like I I don't even get as defensive I used to. Uh, for even things like, uh, so I remember someone was peeking me uh, on like something that I was doing, like a little kid was like making fun of my drawing or whatever, or not my drawing. Um, we were playing some sort of game, I forget exactly, and they're just like, "Oh, you're bad at this," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah," and I, and I, I thought about it. I was like, the reason why I didn't really react to it one is a kid, and who cares. Um, but two, it's like, yeah, I, I just started playing this. Like, why would I be good? You know? And and the, the next question was, do I care to be good at this now? Like, is this something that I actually want to be great at? And it's funny because whenever I see my friends, whenever we play games, I get really competitive and I can see them not be as cool and <laughs> collected about certain things, you know? and. Yeah. And it's not to say that I'm better than them, and it's not to say that they are worse people because they're super competitive. It's, I'm just saying that, like, it may have taken me 10 years to kind of get out of that mentality myself, you know? And I yeah. still feel like a little bit of it is in me, you know? I don't think it's entirely evacuated. And so uh, a lot of that is something that you, like I said earlier, everything takes time to get better at even psychological stuff, right? Yeah. So always keep that in mind. Like if you feel like really frustrated and you feel frustrated about your frustration, like that's, don't do that. Like it's fine. Like you're, you need to learn not to be frustrated as well, right? Yeah. And, uh, and say, okay. And I had a student that had a lot of anxiety issues and one of the tools I gave him was like, well, why don't you do this? Like just pain, you know, because he'll get really bothered because you feel like, oh, my painting could be better. My painting could be better. And you start, like looping that in his head over and over again, right? Yeah. I was like, why don't you? Yeah. I was like, why don't you just for thirty minutes just paint, and then stop and just take a break, fifteen minutes. Like, go get some coffee or go outside or something. You know, do something completely different, right? Play a video game or something, uh, and then come back and then spend forty minutes on it. Add ten minutes, you know, and then do that, and then again take a break, fifteen minute break, and so on and so so forth. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Until you can paint consistently for about an hour, an hour and a half. I was like, I don't really even think people should be painting for more than two to three hours at a time. That's too much time to sit down 
But again, a lot of this is like still like a hypothesis. Like I'm still kind of like I need to put the. Uh, I finally had the energy to probably do this experiment too. I'm gonna get a group of people that I don't. I'm gonna get a group of students and then a group of people that are not artists at all and challenge this idea of practice and well uh, practiced studying versus uh, just raw talent, right? Yeah. And let's do it over like a six months or something like that, over a half a year or even a year, and just see how mm -hmm. fast people can improve. If they just focus on, uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna put so, together some sort of curriculum, and it'll be great because it it might be a really huge success, and then I can um, capitalize on that, and then yeah. do what I really one of my big passions right now is is just to change the face of education, because right now yeah. I'm kind of disappointed with it. Yeah, the education system we have in North America is pretty uh, old. Yeah, it, it's pretty bad everywhere. And uh, I want to change it and make it free if I can, or really cheap, so that anybody in the world can, if they never went to any kind of proper school, become a really good um, student on their own. Uh, a cool goal. Yeah, like I said, I'm trying to make changes in a more uh, real way instead of just you know, like, like I, and I learned a lot of this from you guys. So thank you. You guys, a lot of you guys are good examples. Like I've been teaching for almost six years now. Mm -hmm. And, um, I've learned a lot, learned a lot from just teaching people and, um, seeing very similar. And that's like, that's why I've gotten really good at, uh, finding the weaknesses of certain people and exploiting them. I'm not perfect at it, but I'm definitely really good at it. And it's only because I've been doing it for so long and I've been seeing all types of shapes and sizes when it comes to artists. And so, and so I want to do more experiments. I want to actually quantify what, my, what I believe so then it's not a, a hypothesis anymore. It's actually a theory and there's some actual evidence to support that, you know? It's pretty interesting. Yeah, I really believe it. I really believe what I'm saying. And so, but there's only one way to find out is to prove it because I could be wrong, right? I don't think I am, but I can be. And there's only one way to find out. It makes sense. Yeah, there's only one way to find out. And so, uh, and so I'm gonna try it. But like I said, going back to like the the hard work stuff. Um, yeah, quantify always, always find a way to say this is it. This is where I'm going to cut off the the time that I'm working on this. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try that. Because like uh, this week has been uh, kind of hellish for me, like for uh, the old art class I have been doing. Oh yeah. I've been spending like way too much hour on it, like uh, without breaks, and I found myself in a spot where uh, like all my work was just shitty because I was tired of working, but I was still trying yeah. to make something because I was stressed because it was for a job. And I, I kind yeah. of learned a valuable lesson by doing that. But just wanted yeah. to have your take on it. Yeah, making mistakes. See, that's a great example. So, so sometimes, you know, I, I can talk all day about this stuff, but sometimes people just need to experience it. And then and then now when you hear me explain this stuff to you, like not only does it resonate with you like 100% more, right? Yeah. Like yeah, totally. it, 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 you can start to apply it right away to the solutions that you might need, right? Like, like I, I've explained this to you. Right, and then you you were like still didn't necessarily take that advice, but now mm -hmm. you're like, oh man, I should have totally taken breaks. Like AJ's <laughs> right. Like why didn't I, you know, like even when I uh, had students that had like really hectic schedules and they're like, I don't have time to get work done, and I would sit down with them, and even when I would do that, I would always still find, I would still design time for them to uh, to basically play. You know? Yeah. I was like, okay, spend two hours doing this, but then, you know, spend two hours doing whatever you want. Leisure activity. Watch YouTube videos, play video games, whatever you want. You know, some other teachers will be like, you can't, don't do that. Draw every second of the day. Um, there's already scientific proof against that. So that, that if you just have people work constantly, they do less work. Uh, some countries have already done this where they've removed the eight-hour work day to the six hour work day, right? Because they there's lots of evidence against this idea of like constantly working, right? Isn't there a 
a trend in programming where people like work for only four hours a day, but very intensively. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard, I think Google does a lot of that. Yeah. Kind of interesting. Yeah, I, um, like I said, I'm a big believer of moderation and, and paying attention to that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times people just really kind of get, I really need to close this out. Oh, I don't know if we'll be able to play Overwatch after all, by the way, Michelle. Maybe later. Cause my, my wife just tapped me. She wants to, I think we want to go to get breakfast. My parents. Um, but anywho. Oh, well, now we're friends. We'll play some other time. Um, but like I, I encourage people to, 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 like I said, have downtime. I really do. Because it's just, it's important to, to enjoy your time. And like I said, there's, there's plenty of studies that I've been watching recently and I've known before that have proven this. Like people who don't overwork um, are better off. They're just more creative. They have more uh, energy to do the work. They're more focused. I encourage whenever you are working, try to remove all your distractions, you know, like mm -hmm. just work like 20, 30 minutes straight without any distraction at all. And then maybe after that, like take a break, like a five minute break, get some water or something, go outside and then, or check your Facebook for a few minutes and then get back to work for like 20, 30 minutes and doing that for like two hours straight. And then, you know, Taking a complete break, like an hour to two hour break and go work out or go, uh, you know, do something that you like to do, <laughs> you know, uh, and it's, it's, it's a guilt free lifestyle, too, because then when you're playing your video games or whatever, or you're watching a movie or whatever you're doing, whatever it may be, whatever your poison is, I guess, uh, it doesn't feel like poison. It feels like you deserved it because you've done work already. Yeah. It feels like uh, it's OK, like you can get get away with it. Yeah, so they experiment more with that uh, proportion in my activities. Yeah, yeah. Um, one last thing before I have to let you guys go. Like, I talked about this before, but I want to make it very clear and then I want to peace out. Um, just on the subject of all this. You know, that's why, like, fitness programs and all that stuff don't work. It's because they, they do that. They're like, you know, in 30 days, you'll have a six-pack abs. It's like this absurd amount of exercise. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah. you know, if you don't get the six pack abs or you don't feel like you got what you wanted, you know, we'll give you money back guarantee kind of thing. Right. But they know who you are. They know that you're a lazy motherfucker and that that you're going to do it for the first week or two and it's going to work. You're going to lose weight. You're going to feel great. But it's just so intense that you're going to fall off really dramatically. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, you don't do it at all. And you just feel like you feel like you failed not the system, that the program works, but you just didn't have the willpower. Yeah. Okay? Uh, but the, the false, it's false. It's the other way around. No, the program doesn't work. The program's putting too much effort. It's giving you too many things to do. You had to start, you have to start smaller. You have to make mi minor micro changes to your lifestyle to make gradual and large changes to your lifestyle. Like when we were talking about the vegan stuff, for instance, when I first switched, I didn't go complete, like hardcore, like I didn't do like a 180, like a pen, pen from Penn and Teller, for instance, like he went full 180. He, uh, yeah. he basically just ate potatoes, <laughs> right? He went from eating his, whatever he wanted to only potatoes for two weeks. I didn't do that. That's crazy. Um, some people can do that, right? Obviously. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I could have been one of those people. I, I feel like I have the kind of temperament to be able to do that too, but I didn't because I know better. If I wanted to really make this last, I'm going to do it this differently. And what I did was uh, I just said, if I can avoid it, I will. If I can avoid meat, I will. So when I went out, I went out to eat with my friends, I'll just get the salads. Uh, when I was at home, I'll try to cook myself mostly plants, right? And sometimes my wife would make me a fish or a chicken. I'll eat it. It's no big deal, right? If I, I went to like a barbecue place and there's really nothing good or appetizing, I was like, oh, you know, it's fine. I'll just get the ribs or whatever you know yeah. and if i ended up only eating once or twice a week 
like the first two weeks. It actually wasn't as difficult as I thought. So then I tried to remove it completely in the next month. And then I tried to remove dairy the following month. You understand? Like it's just, and to the point where I am at now, where I'm completely educated about what I should and shouldn't eat. Yeah. Right. Uh, and it's about like a, about a year now I've done this. Yeah, and I don't see me ever going back. I don't have any cravings other than the hot wings that I mentioned. Rabbit, so, yeah. yeah, I only have cravings for hot wings, and so, really? but it's like it's it's a terrible craving to have because it's like the worst of the worst. So I don't. I don't... You can have a um, how do you call it uh, a tempeh? You know what tempeh is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I do. I actually, whenever I have cravings, I I get uh, I go to Veggie Grill because they have like fake chicken wings and they taste just like they taste just as much as good, yeah. not as good. But they're pretty close, and they get rid of my craving. And so, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying you're right. There's the solution. That's what I'm trying to get at. And getting back to kind of like art, yeah, getting back to kind of like art, like the whole the same thing, guys. It's like you don't want to overburden yourself with like I'm gonna do lighting, paintings. I'm gonna do anatomy studies. You know, you're not gonna just don't. You don't have to do every five seconds like something crazy. You know, just say oh, you know. I feel like I need to learn my anatomy today and just kind of focus on anatomy for like a week or two and then just move on. It's like, you know, I need to work on my lighting and work on my lighting. And it just, it'll be like a circle comes back around and the next thing you know, you'll be a badass. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes time, right? It takes, it absolutely takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen um, if you don't do anything at all. Right. The really, the only thing that prevent you guys from becoming the awesome artists that you guys want to be you know, like the, the amazing artists that I believe all of you have the capability of being, uh, is not doing anything at all. That's it. Yeah, that's the worst thing. Yeah, if you don't do anything at all, you, you're guaranteed to not succeed. But if you do anything, even if it doesn't seem like you're doing the right kinds of things, that's better than doing nothing. Because that will teach you yeah. what not to do. Kind of like what I you were just saying right now. now. Right, like, like you were just saying with your art tests and stuff. Like it, you learned what not to do. You know, yeah. like it's just as valuable to know that the, as it is to know what to do. So, hope and that helps you. Thing, the thing about doing stuff, I think, is the most valuable advice I've never had from someone. Because a year ago, I was not drawing that much, and the last year, I've drawn a lot since I've yeah. been following your video and your streams, and I've improved like drastically. I'm not still, yeah. I'm still not a badass, but working my way there yeah dude it's like it took it took me a while to get as good as i am you know it's, i'm not <laughs> i'm not disillusioned i'm not gonna say that it's gonna take you it's over in a month you guys will be all epic artists i don't believe that at all but uh like i said i'm trying to plant that seed that will make you guys all epic artists <laughs> and all all you got to do is what i follow my instruction at, at least in a, in a very general way which is paint practice study pay attention you know, and uh, communicate with one another. That's all you really need to do. You know, uh, yeah, what the class, the yeah, what my class does really well is to hopefully keep you guys motivated uh, and also give you some accountability because you have to turn in stuff to me and I have to look at it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but aside from that, you can do a lot of these things on your own. You don't have to keep taking my classes. You really don't. Uh, some of the students, like what they'd like to do is they'll, take my class like you're one of them right like they just take my classes later after they feel their uh they they feel like there's some improvement but they need to kind of get a refresher i think that makes sense but I, I really am in the in the in the business to teach you guys once or twice that's it you know i want you to yeah. save your money i want you to become epic artists all right but i get it you know sometimes people want to like even right now i'm like uh, going to uh, after Christmas, I'm going to spend some money on some classes. I was going to do some online sculpting classes from some people that I really admire um, and really learn from them. I was looking at some of their students' works and then, like, looking at uh, how, like, amazing those students became after those classes. And I'm just like, damn, dude, he must have some real insight. I want to get in there. So it's like a curiosity both as a teacher and as, like, actual artist. I want to become a better sculptor. Yeah. Do you have a, a, I guess, a reference for that kind of class for 3D sculpting? Uh, yeah, Gia, Gia Napkill is the class I'm going to take. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He has, uh, I'm not sure if he has, oh, there you go. 
Yeah, this is the class I was going to do. I was going to do the $200 class one. So I don't have that money to spend on like the $700 one. I would love, and he's, he's a friend of mine too. So it's not like, um, it's not like, uh, I could probably just message him and ask him stuff. <laughs> you know? So I could, I could talk to him, but I want to take his class. Like, I don't want to bug him like every five seconds, you know? Yeah. Um, but I, I'll bug him though. Absolutely. Once I start getting some, some leg room. And you guys are on Discord. You guys can bug me when it, when I'm around. I'm gonna definitely be more around in the next few months since I'm feeling better. Yeah, so we can ask you a question if we have some. Yeah, it's just the the difference is that I might not get to you right at the moment, or if at all, or anytime yeah. soon. But yeah, I, yeah, I'll yeah. definitely be around. Yeah. So you it's must have a, a schedule. Well, it's, no, it's because like I have my other students too that like you know they'll yeah. take my classes, so they definitely have priority of my time and effort. Uh, but if I'm just sitting there and I'm like doing nothing and I'm like working on something, uh, and you have like a question that I can just answer really quickly, absolutely. Because um, that's the whole point. I want to build a community of people to talk. And eventually, what's going to happen is I don't, I might not have to do it at all because there's going to be a lot of other people there who are students who are already badass and they're helping each other out. Already, the feedback uh, room is just incredible. Like, yeah, that's, I that's so my much goal. from other work too. Yeah, yeah that's my goal is so that you, you have all kinds of avenues all of you guys to learn from one another and from me like i don't think i have all the answers but i definitely like i said want you plant the seeds to help you find all the answers yeah all right uh, is there yeah is there any other final questions i definitely need to go but uh any like real questions that you really want to get off your chest that i haven't answered or you feel like I, oh, I can answer? No? Well, guys, I appreciate all of you. I think you guys did astounding work for my class. I'm very proud of everything that you've done. You guys should be very proud, too. Keep up the good work. Like I said, don't be strangers to one another. Communicate to one another often. Try to help each other out. You know, keep the community strong. And, uh, yeah, peace out, guys. Have a great weekend and great uh, growth. Later. All right. Thanks, man. We'll see you around on Discord. Thanks, AJ. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.